hello guys welcome back to my channel so if you haven't subscribed my channel please go and click the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you can get notification about new comsol videos in today's video i'm going to show you that how you can simulate oscillating beam in a fluid flow using fluid structure interaction modeling so i'm going to solve a 2d problem so the first step is to go and click the add component and select the 2d i already solved the problem so i'm going to show you all the steps in detail so the first step is to define the geometry so in the geometry first you need to check the length unit should be in the meter and then you need to right click on the geometry and select the rectangle so you already selected the rectangle here then you need to provide width and height 3 and 0 0.4 and then click the build selected so you can see here we have created a rectangle of 3 meter width and 0 0.4 meter height the next step is to build an ellipse so again you need to right click on geometry and select the ellipse from here and in the ellipse i have selected the a semi axis and b semi axis values for the a semi axis value it's 0 0.05 and b 0 0.1 and the sector angle is 360 for the base i have selected 0 0.4 for the x axis and for the y i have divided 0 0.4 divided by 2 to keep the ellipse in the center so once so once i click on build selected you can see here we successfully generated ellipse in our geometry so the next step is to again build another rectangle and this time we are going to make a beam so the width of the beam is 0 0.5 but the height is 0 0.02 and here you can see we are going to build the beam starting from 0 0.4 and the vertical position of the beam is 0 0.4 divided by 2 and 0 0.02 uh, divided by 2 with the minus sign so click build selected so you can see here we successfully generated a beam uh, in our model so the next step is to build another rectangle so this rectangle we are going to use for the moving mesh so the width and the height are given here 0 0.4 and 0 0.7 and 0 0.4 and the position of the rectangle is 0 0.4 from the x-axis and 0 from the y so if I click build selected you can see here we built a rectangle for the moving mesh so the next step is to subtract the ellipse from the beam so for that you need to right click on geometry and go to boolean and partition and then select the difference so here you can see here we have selected the difference so so in the difference for the objects to add you need to active the selection and select your beam and for the objects to subtract then again click on active selection and select this uh, ellipse and then click on build selected so the next step is to again select another difference function and in this function you need to select r1 and r2 for the objects to add so r1 is the whole fluid domain and r3 is the moving mesh domain for the objects to subtract you need to active selection and e1 you can see here the ellipse and r2 is the beam and then click build selected so you can see here the ellipse area has been removed and then finally go to the form union and select build selected so now we are done with the geometry so after the geometry next step is to define the materials so before defining the materials we need to select the appropriate physics so for that purpose you need to go to physics tab and then click on add physics select on structural mechanics and go to fluid structure interaction and select on select fluid solid interaction so once you select this one so automatically you will get two physics laminar flow and solid mechanics so for the laminar flow physics you need to select your domains and in this case the domain number one domain number two and domain number four are fluid and for the solid mechanics you need to select your solid domain so in this case the domain number three is solid domain so once you select your domains so then come back to the material right click on material go to blank materials so once you select the blank material in this case I have changed the name to solid and because this one is for the solid mechanics physics so it is going to ask you to provide young modulus Poisson ratio and density so these are the values for the young model it's 5.6 megapascal and for the Poisson ratio it's 0 0.4 and for the density it's 1 e raised to power 3 or for the fluid so for the fluid domain uh, we need to provide density and dynamic viscosity 
so density and dynamic viscosities are 1000 kg per meter cube and 1 pascal second in this case so once you define your material the next step is to define the boundary condition of your physics in this case we have two physics laminar flow and solid mechanics for the laminar flow physics you need to go to the fluid properties and check the density and the dynamic viscosities are taken from the material and then right click on the laminar flow and select the inlet and outlet boundary conditions so for the inlet boundary condition we are providing a velocity function you can see here this velocity function is multiplied with the step function so the step function in this case let me show you the step function so in this case you need to right click on definition and go to function and select the step function from the functions and here is the step function we have you need to select the value 0 0.5 and uh, you need to select 2 uh, is equal to 1 and size of transition zone is 1 and then you can plot it so this is the step function we are using for our velocity so if you come back here the in inlet velocity function so this velocity function is basically a parabolic function so here is, this is the inlet parabolic function we are using for our velocity and for the outlet we are using zero pressure value and suppressed backflow so now our laminar flow physics is fully defined so we'll move to the second physics which is solid mechanics physics so if i open solid mechanics physics you can see here our domain number three is selected because this is the solid beam we have so if you click on linear elastic so you can see here one two and four are fluid domains and three is the solid domain so in this case we, you can see here you need to select the solid model isotropic this you need to specify young modulus and Poisson ratio we already defined the young modulus Poisson ratio and density of the solid material in our solid material you can see here all these values so here we are just referring the values from material so now you need to provide a fixed constraint so click on the right click on solid mechanics and select the fixed constraint from here so in the fixed constraint you need to fix the beam from the one end so in this case if i if i zoom in so you can see here the beam is fixed from this end and on the other end we need to provide a point load so in this case right click on solid mechanics and go to points and then click on point load so you will have point load for the point load we have selected this one point let me zoom and show you this point we have selected of the beam and then we are applying the load in the y direction so it's one newton multiplied by the Gaussian pulse so how you can define Gaussian pulse again you need to click on the definition right click on definition go to the function and then go and select the Gaussian pulse in this case we have selected the Gaussian pulse so you need to provide the values 1.5 and standard deviation is 5 e raised to power minus 2 so if you click plot you can see here smooth Gaussian pulse and we are using this Gaussian pulse for our point load so once you define the fixed constraint and point load on the beam so now it's fully defined the solid mechanics physics the next step is to go to the multi physics and you will have fluid structure interaction and if you don't have then uh, right click on multi physics and add from the fluid structure interaction so here you can see here we have two physics the fluid physics and the structure physics in the fluid you need to select laminar flow and in the structure you need to select the solid mechanics and then you need to select fully coupled the next step is to generate the mesh so in this case we are using physics control mesh and the element size we have selected the normal so if you select the more fine or finer mesh it will take more time to simulate the problem so for the study step you need to select the time dependent study and for the output range you need to select the range from 0 to 5 with the step of 5 e raised to power minus 2 and then you can check the plot for, for the results while solving the problem so once the simulation is done you can come to your results in this case you can see here we have velocity profile so we have steady solution one and we have a solution for different times so if i click to the first and if i click next you can see here how the flow is flowing from left to right and 
the beam is oscillating so let me show you the whole process in an animation so to generate the animation you need to right click on export and go to animation and then player so in this case I'm going to select forever and then click on play button you can see here how the beam is now oscillating due to the flow so that's all about the velocity profile now we have solved the problem for fully coupled so I'll show you the stress values on the beam so for that purpose I will right click on results go to 2d plots and then in the 2d plot I'll right click on that go to the surface plot and from the expression I'll click here and go to the solid mechanics go to the stresses and then select the ball my stresses so now click plot so so you can clearly see here the stresses on the beam so if I click from the start so now you can see here at different time steps the amount of one my stress is generated in the beam so you can clearly monitor the stress value here So if I go to the animation tab and instead of velocity I select the 2d plot group 2 so then click play and you can see here the stress value generated on the beam that's all about today's video thank you so much for watching